You can't be a professional athlete without having some lofty aspirations. I mean, you gotta dream big. A few majors, maybe a player of the year. Hey, and when it's all said and done, a one-way ticket to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, why not? The reality is most of the tour never reaches these heights. Never experienced that rarefied air. But these two aren't most guys. They've done what most bowlers can only dream of. Beauty. Oh, the, the Hall of Famer, who's never shied away from the spotlight. The reigning player of the year and defending champ. For the win! He's got it! Quick flare, baby! The belt's coming home! It's Tommy Jones and Kyle Troop, toe-to-toe -to -toe for the belt. This is what I call finishing the year in style. Double pick, baby! The 2022 Kia PDA Playoffs Championship starts now on Fox. So now it's down to the first pro of bowling, your nine seed, Kyle Troop, and the Hall of Famer, six seed, Tommy Jones. And you have a free chance to win $1,000 today playing the Fox Bet Super 6. Simply scan that QR code right now, download the Super 6 app, and make your six picks for today's PBA Playoffs Final for a free shot at the $1,000 jackpot. We welcome you lane side. I'm Rob Stone. Glad you're with us today. He is the Hall of Famer, Randy Peterson. He is the living legend, <laughs> Norm Duke. Chilling with us on a Sunday. Great man, to have great you, to man. to be here on a Sunday. Oh, you guys. man. It's so good to have you. I'm, as long as you're associated with the lanes, the sport is in a good place. All right. So, Norm, it's great to have you here with us. Let's talk about our two finalists here today and some, some similar resurgent type stories, but certainly on different timelines. We begin with Kyle Troop, the reigning PBA playoff champ, one of the titles he won last year en route to winning Player of the Year honors. But 2022, Randy, has been off until... Until these playoffs, right. Rob. Uh, I mean, it all changed when Kyle Troop uh, came to the 2022 playoffs. He beat Rash, he beat O'Neal, he beat Prather. He's undefeated this year at the playoffs. He literally saved his season here. And to me, he is back to 2021 form where he won just south of a half a million dollars. Uh, if this season was going to continue a couple more months, Kyle Troop might, might be back in the player of the year race. Talk about Tommy Jones. How many TV appearances did he have last year? Zero. None. The donut, the goose egg. So there are a lot of folks out there saying, Tommy, we're going to start writing you off, right? Like a little soap opera. We're done with him. Rewrite. Tommy Jones is back in a big way this season. Yeah, we've all been through it. I mean, if you're an athlete, you've had a slump or a bad year, and the great ones are able to bounce back. And with 20 PBA titles, Tommy Jones is a great one. And three times he's been in the top five this season in majors alone. But it's a chance today if he can knock off Kyle Troop at one hundred thousand dollars I'll tell you what, he's loving his bowling game right now. Take a look at the top finishes this season. Again, the big the big number down there at the bottom. Zero TV apps last year. Look at these finishes. Third, fourth, fifth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Today will be his best finish regardless of how he finishes this season. Let's take a look at your odds to win courtesy of our great partners at Fox Bet and Kyle Troop has been installed as the favorite in this race to three. How about this crowd today in Jupiter? Kimberly Fressler standing by with today's two finalists. Well, Rob, on paper, it looks like this can be an absolute slugfest, but Kyle, let's start with you because you're undefeated in the playoffs. But Tommy over here has had a phenomenal season so far, making five television shows. So what is your game plan against the Hall of Famer today so that you walk away with a second WWE belt? Kimberly, I've got to just stick to, stick to me, you know, do my game. Uh, Tommy, like you said, he's been red hot all year. Uh, I've known him for a long time. So, uh, you know, we, we have a lot of friendly wagers throughout the years and whatnot. So, uh, you know, I'm going to stick to my game. Hopefully that's enough to beat him. And between you and me, I think it is. I love the trash talking already. Good luck to you today, Kyle. 
All right, Tommy, you heard him. He's not going to make it easy on you. He is coming into this, and he hasn't even had to go to a roll-off. He's taken down every opponent. But like I said, you've had a phenomenal season. So what do you have to focus on so that you walk away with that belt today? Uh, same thing Kyle just said. You know, we all have our own process, so I have to stick to my process and, uh, you know, get out there and make some decisions. I mean, this is a little bit different than uh, most TV shows. We're going to bowl each other for uh, almost two hours here, so we're going to go through some transition and stuff, and whoever can battle that the most is probably going to come out victorious. Well, it's going to be a phenomenal match no matter what. Good luck to you. All right, Kimberly, thank you very much. As we take a look at the format for this PBA playoff final, it is a race to three, winner of each game gets one point. If we are tied after four games at 2-2, two -two, we're going on to a ninth and 10th frame roll off to decide who takes home that WWE belt. Tommy Jones is up first. Representing South Carolina out of Simpsonville, 20 career PBA Tour titles, two-time major champion, a PBA rookie and player of the year, PBA Hall of Famer, Tommy Jones! <laughs> I'm not sure what that was. That was a pick. Oh, there's nothing uh, to pick, though. Exactly. That's the joke. I'll tell you what, though, in the semifinals, he picked on A.J. Johnson, but it was a total grind, guys. Beats A.J. in the first game, 215-193. Loses game two, 181-172, to 172, and then wins in a roll-off. But this is the year of resurgence for Tommy Jones. He's three wins away from 100K. 20 tour titles. There's his path here through the PBA playoffs. Took down the 11, 14, and 10 seed. Tommy is your six seed. Kyle, your nine seed. <sighs> Tommy starting with urethane purple hammer. No, no big shock there. No big shock, especially early. Let's go! And, and guys, you know, for me, I think there's there's two formulas, and we'll get to that right after the intro of Kyle Troop. Representing North Carolina, out of Taylorsville, eight career PBA Tour titles, the son of Guppy, the reigning PBA Player of the Year and defending PBA Playoffs Champion, the Afrofish, Kyle Troop. And Kyle actually had some hair to pick, Rob. Right? A lot. Yeah. Semifinals for Kyle went up against Chris Brather. Wins game one, 227, 212. Wins game two, 233, 215. Throughout the playoffs, and we've talked about it, we talked about it in the open. It's the Kyle of 2021 all over again. Yeah, he lost here at the playoffs. All right, nothing but 2 0, 2 0, 2 0. Took down Sean Rash, Bill O'Neill, and then Chris Prather in the semis. Yeah, you know what? He looks different now than he did earlier in the year. Earlier in the year, it looks like it was just going to come to him. Now, he looks like he has to work for it, and he knows it, and it's working for him. Kyle, two going with your thing, using a fast pitch. And, and Norm, that's kind of what we've seen throughout the playoffs for a lot of players. They start with your thing, and they go, they go with that ball for about a game. They push enough ball down towards the head pin, and then they jump in with the reactive resin. Yeah, earlier in the matches, their reactive resin bowling balls just respond too much left of target, and it gets them in trouble too often, so they start with a ball that doesn't hook very much. There's a good spare there. But I'll tell you what, I just watched the first shot for, for Kyle Troop there, and he really babied that ball, took a lot of the ball speed back, and it still didn't get up the hill. I think he'll change outside of your thing before Tommy Jones does. There's the arsenal for Kyle Troop today. Different ball in the left lane, Rob, pitch black. Same thing right there, Randy. That ball just did not roll enough to hit the pins hard enough. Uh, I think the practice has gotten so much oil down in front of the pins already 
that that transition, that first one's going to happen quick. Don't get me going on the practice time. Practice? Practice. I'm talking about practice. <laughs> Well, Rob Norm seems to think that Kyle's going to jump into reactive resin a lot sooner than we've yeah, seen. He's already having a conversation, right, with his, his assistants. And again, this is a race to three, so no reason to panic. You're going to have plenty of time to make up some ground, but you know, definitely some, some question marks early on in the troop camp. Nine spare, nine spare. Tommy opened up the show with a strike, looking for his second. that soft urethane hit, Norm. You know, that's what you and I were kind of used to back in the 80s. We did that all the time in the <laughs> 80s. That's why we didn't miss near as many 10 pins. We shot more of yeah, them. Yeah, we sure yeah. did. Tell me more about the 80s, Uncle Norm. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've got a great Norm Duke story that I'll tell you when we come back from our first break. Tommy takes care of the 10 pin. All right, let's take a look at today's Brunswick oil pattern. And Randall, they're rolling on the Don Carter, 39 feet. Yeah, 39 feet. And remember, the outside part of the lane is slick, and you can't get it wide of maybe three, four. If you do, it's going to hydroplane. So you can see the red line is what the players are going to start with with urethane. And then once they go to reactive resin, they're going to jump into the blue line. Well, this is the first ever head-to-head -head TV meeting between Jones and Troop. Two frames in, leads at one. Hug a bunch. Hug a bunch. Hug a bunch. Now, you know, Norm, when you're asking a urethane ball to hook a bunch, isn't that asking a bit much? I thought it was, but it hooked a bunch. <laughs> you know? I, he missed this off his hand. And didn't get quite the rotation on it that he was looking for. He also missed right, and it still got up. So I'll tell you this, the caveat about this pair is the right lane, if you get it wide of about the seventh board, good luck. It's going to miss the head pin. The left lane, you got a little bit more right room. Mm -hmm. Seems like the left lane hooks a bit more and has throughout the playoffs. And you can see it there, right? I mean, back-to-back -back light shots for Kyle on the right lane. Yeah, and that was not a bad shot nope. either. Uh, wasn't that bad. Two pin dropped 97% of the time on the tour. You know where we get those stats? We get those, those stats from our good friends at Lane Talk. For more information, visit lanetalk.com. So Kyle remains clean, but it's three spares through three frames. And Kyle has had just some explosive numbers here at the Kia PBA playoffs. Look at the numbers, back-to-back two six sixes versus Sean Rash, a two seventy eight on Bill O'Neill, and then two twenty seven two thirty three versus Prather. So a two forty five point eight three average to the course of his six games in the playoffs coming into today. Kyle needs a strike. He needs to get this crowd going. He's not going to find it there. Oh, he is! He is! Not so fast, my friend! Take it! Oh, there, yeah, there's some nonverbals going on with Kyle. Yeah, he throws this ball so good, but it overhooked when it got yeah. around that area where Tommy Jones' ball got back and he didn't think it was. His ball actually rebounded too hard off yeah. of it. This, this transition has already started. Uh, and, and earlier I said I think there's two keys to winning today. It's execution and following the transition. Norm, you shook your head, but they didn't hear you say yes. I said yes. Okay. Inside my mind. <laughs> Randy sometimes needs that validation. Well, you should know this listen, by now. Listen, anytime Norm validates anything I say, 100%. It's yeah. a good day. It's a good day. Yeah. It's not a good day. It's a great day. Yeah. Y'all talk like I don't validate much. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Norm, uh, in the coming weeks, we're going to see you on the lanes 
the little King of the Lanes competition. King Can't wait to see out there. Lanes. By the way, Tommy is going to take on Kyle yeah. in an upcoming King of the, King of the Lanes, of the Lanes yeah. showdown. That's uh, next month on FS1. We are live today on Fox. Tommy Jones right through the nose. All right, so Norman, what are you seeing now? You got the early jump on the left lane for Kyle. This one goes right through the face for Tommy. And it's all it's all because of the urethane beating the front part of the lane up. Well, to get urethane to hook, you have to sand it. And when you sand those bowling balls, they're going to pick up more oil in the front than they are delivering oil in the back. Gotcha. So they're overhooking now to the right just from what? About a dozen shots on each lane yep. total. So this is going quick. Got to pay respect to this bear. And that's why. Yep. Open frame. Tape. Oh, he's going to the tape now. Remember, we had some tape issues with Tommy in a recent broadcast. Yeah, well, he's had some issues here in Florida because of the heat and the humidity. This is like uh, the bowling version of Operation, right? Don't touch the edge. <laughs> don't touch the edge. Shocked. <laughs> that was an 80s game, by the way. It all comes back to the 80s, Norm. <laughs> Uncle Norm, tell me about the 80s. Next year's going to be a battleship reference. Oh, great game. So two former players of the year. We had a little Chris Schenkel conversation last night. Yeah, we did. Out at dinner with the great Bill Raftery. Amazing. Amazing time. That was an epic name drop. Wow. Seven. No, I mean, I'm sorry, Rob. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, this crowd is is wanting. Yeah, they're waiting. They're for waiting. It. They're, yeah. they're wanting to explode. We got some hardcore bowling fans. We got some newbie fans in the crowd too. And yeah. these are not the numbers they are expecting here through four and a half. Norm, how much longer do they stay with the urethane? I would have already been out of it. However. Uh, Tommy's probably going to stay with your thing a lot longer than Kyle because he's getting his ball to actually hook. I don't see Kyle throwing another urethane ball on the right lane. If he does, he'll go to the black one, which hooks a little bit more than the pitch blue. Um, I'd be changing right now. Yeah, we've seen more curious faces than we have strikes today. Both Troop, Jones, just a lot of looks, a lot of looks at the lanes, at the ball choices, what's going on. And a real deliberate pace here today as well. Yeah. He's staying with the pitch blue. Working on a strike. Come on, Drew! Oh, my. So then you add that to the equation, Norm. Uh, so you huh? ace a shot. Oh. So you're having trouble getting into the pocket. Then you ace a shot, and you leave a ring 10. Right, and that's just because the ball is not on the lane. It is just hovering on that oil, hydroplaning. And so, therefore, it renders the pins, and uh, it deflects a little more. You leave a 10 pin. Not to say that there's not moves that you can continue with that ball and get the 10 pin out, but what ratio? Now, he thought he had that one, for okay. sure. You saw that reaction. Again, probably the early theme here, outside of the challenges these two guys are having with the oil, is Kyle's clean. Tommy's had that open frame. And nobody has struck yet on the right lane. No strikes on the right lane, no pairs of strikes yet. Well, every time I've personally been on this pair of lanes, the right lane has been awful to me. through five and a half. Game one here at the key uh, PBA playoffs final. Tommy and Kyle both still trying to find their way through these lanes.
The PBA on Fox is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. Get cash out of your home's equity with a cash out refi from Guaranteed Rate. Learn more at rate.com. And by Kia and the new Forte GT. It is one fantastic ride. Beautiful look at Jupiter Inlet. That's how Norm Duke got here. Oh, look at the power couple that showed up today. Is that Brady Quinn? Brady Quinn. Yeah. Alicia Sacramoni Quinn, one of the most decorated gymnasts in U.S. women's history. Brady Quinn. You know him. You love him. Absolutely. Notre Dame Notre legend. Dame. Fox yep. Sports legend. Sloan and Teagan here as well. And you still have a free chance to win $1,000 playing Fox Bet Super 6. Scan the QR code now. Download that Super 6 app and enter your six picks for a free shot at the jackpot. The contest closes soon, so download that Fox Bet Super 6 app right now. Play for free. I know in the past, some of those questions have been like, what will the final score be? Well, I think we were optimistic that the scoring would be high here in game one. Not so much right now as you take a look at how both Kyle and Tommy got here to the final in the semifinals. Troop took care of Prather, A.J. Johnson falling to Tommy Jones. So these two colliding for the first time, but not the last time in a couple weeks here. We're going to have these two guys on a <sighs> King of the Lane show yep. taking on each other for the right to go after the crown. So this is a race to three format today, game one. What could be four? <laughs> Tommy hasn't struck since the third, and is that a strike on the right lane? Finally. <clears throat> so here's what Tommy did in his six games through the course of the Kia PBA playoffs. It was high a 249. That 172 that snuck in there. Of course, that was in a, a loss. Came back nicely, though, in that roll-off. You want to you hear my Norm Duke story? Please, yes. A 1980 story involving Norm Duke. 1980 story. Norm's driving home from uh, way out east, driving back to Oklahoma. Norm, do you know this story already? Yes. He's, okay. he's dead tired. Wait for it. Love that. Oh, back to back, Jacks. Dog tired, stops at the gas station, puts the nozzle in the tank, goes to fill up his car, pumping the gas, he gets done and goes in to pay and then gets in his car and he drives off with the nozzle still in oh the no. tank. Oh no. I pulled that pump straight out of the ground. Too. The, the cover came off first and that thing's winding and following me. I'd already, I'd already <laughs> told the attendant, I'd waved him off, it was full service. I'd waved him off because it was so cold, and next thing I know, that thing's laying on its side. Oh, oh Kyle leaves the tent, that's like um, vacation, where Chevy goes around the back and puts the dog on the bumper. Poor guy must have been running around for a couple miles. Another guy. flat 10 on the right lane here. I tell you what, he's going to have to do something. That ball just is not Wait, can I far. go back to the gas station thing? Did, yeah. you have to, did, you, did you just speed off, or did you have to reimburse them for anything? No, no, I gave my number to the guy, and, uh, you know, he was really, really livid. And uh, well, Rightfully he, so, by the he way. He called me for about two months because I had no money. I couldn't pay him for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle kicks that one in there. Uh, did he finally track you down? He tracked me down, yeah. Yeah, huh? he got me. He got you? Yeah, he got you. <laughs> What does a gas thing go for Shoot, back in the 80s? I don't remember. Um, I know that he got me. I don't know if he got his money. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> good good follow-up question. Hey, Rob. Yes, sir. You're welcome. Yeah, that was a good one. We are even through seven. Norm Duke, Randy Peterson, Kimberly Pressler, Rob Stone here with you today, live on Fox. Final of the 2022 Kia PBA playoffs. Race to three here. Match number one. It has been a slugfest, a real grind. Third strike of this match for Kyle Troop. I like when you call this a rock fight. It, it's, yeah, it's rocky for sure. Yeah, 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 this is definitely a rock fight right now. Not sexy, not all that pretty, just slugging it out. But it, it, they're grinding. Kyle Troop hasn't got less than nine on one shot. He only has three strikes to eight frames. And the only blemish for Jones is the miss spare. Yeah, empty, empty frame in the ninth, or the fourth, rather. But Tommy's up now. He's the only one to pair strikes together, and he's in the midst of it right now. So two in a row looking for three. 
and the only player to strike on the right lane. Which is where he's back to right now. Another win for the right lane. Get it there, it goes off, I'll get it in, it doesn't. Well, he, he kind of whispered it, but I, I picked up on what he was saying. He said, first he said, this lane. And then he said, I get it right, it picks up too early, I get it in, it doesn't pick up at all. Meaning that if he gets it right, it overhooks. If he gets it in, it doesn't hook. Is that not a telltale sign that it's time to get out that of is, the urethane? That is the telltale sign when you got overhook right with non-reactive and underhook left. You get a bigger ball, you move inside, and you bank it off of there. Now, he knows this. Of course he does. If he knows it, why isn't he making the change? Ma well, maybe because the match is tight? I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, they don't want to just go 0-1, and when you start, uh, when you start fishing... That's the easiest way to go 0-1. Mm -hmm. So he resets himself. Three of his four strikes have come on this left lane. Down two. We begin the ninth frame. Boy, with this pace, you can just tell. You know automatically how much is on the line, right? $100,000 to the winner. Wait was worth it. Pretty good numbers there, Norm. Strike track powered by Kia telling us that that shot was within one tenth of an inch of the previous shot on that left lane. Back to the right lane for Troop. And he's staying with that pitch blue that has not been hooking for him. This one is a little newer, I hear, than the old one that he started with. Right. But there's still the same ball. He feels like this will hook a little more far in, and it better. Ooh, finally a strike oh, on the right man. lane for Troop. Trying to be the first to win two PBA playoff titles. Kyle Burns a re-rack. What's that ball he's using on the right lane? Fast pitch. There you go. Don't worry, Norm. I do it all the time. Yeah, you know. When you have a pitch black and then you show them the blue one, you just figure. <laughs> but, no. Strike nine spare to win. Which one's the better of the two lanes for him, Norm? <laughs> the left lane. Okay, of and where's he finishing? On the left lane. Okay. Just want to make sure that you're following along. I know Rob is. Looking for three strikes in a row as Troop. He was staring at 7-10 for a split second. Make a better one. And got the corners to drop. And Troop is suddenly in control of game one. Needs just a nine spare. That was almost catastrophic, and then it turned out to be a strike for him. It, it, it was eight, then it was nine, then it was ten. Yeah, and now he needs nine or ten. Nine spare or strike. He takes game one. There's your nine. If he could take care of the seven pin, it's his. Yeah, normally the seven pin is a pretty easy pin to knock over. We're probably about 96% on tour average, but when you have to have it to shut your opponent out, <laughs> it goes down to probably in the 70%, right? Yeah, it's at 93% on the tour. 
straighten that circle right Sorry, there. sorry, my stylus. The spare for game one, he's got it! <laughs> Yeah, this is an exhale type of a win. 217 is enough. Kyle Troop takes game one in our race to three. More on Kyle and some words of wisdom from Papa Guppy when we return, which is awfully timely considering what we just saw Kyle Troop do. My dad gave me a lot of advice growing up. A few things that I always share and always tell people when I'm asked this question is one, strikes are for show, spares make the dough. Uh, you know, I, I live by that. But also, you just gotta have fun with the game. Double pink, baby! You know, I'm just blessed to be able to do what I love for a living, and that's bold. So I wanna try and make the best of every opportunity when I get to shoe up, whether it's for league, tournaments, pro-am events, have the most fun you can, and you know, be the best version of yourself you can be. Yeah, spares make the dough. There is Gup. We're gonna see Guppy in a couple weeks on the King of the Lanes Royal Family Edition on FS1. And did he just did he just adopt a grandkid? Is that Kyle's is that Kyle's illegitimate son? What is happening over here? I love it. That kid with the oh, wig and the hair fake is wait, awesome. Are you, are you are you sure it's a wig? I checked it. I pulled on it. Yeah. Oh, what a great look. So it, two, two things happen in game one, all right? Let's recap. Tommy misses the 3, 6, 9, 10, so miss spare. And Kyle trips the 7, 10 out for a strike. Could, oh. be, a, could, could be a $50,000 difference. Yep, 33-pin win for Kyle. Only two total strikes on the right lane, one for each. Kyle starts game two on the left. He gets all 10 to collapse. Remember the late, great Billy Whaler? Remember what he called that hit? Hit him thin and watch him spin? Remember that, Norman? Well, I used to hear that, but I, I never met Billy Whaler. I never did either, but I watched his telecast. Hit him thin and watch him spin. Hit him thin and watch him spin. Tommy is in your thing now. Looks like a redemption solid. Well, well, well. 7-10 until that messenger came over in a hurry. Norm, you like the move? Oh, I do. I like I like the move. I liked it probably first two frames of the last game, to tell you the truth. But you can just watch the power that this type of ball has into the pins. And now they've got enough oil on the left side of the lane to hold pocket. Rob, isn't it amazing how much faster the wood flies from urethane to reactive resin. That was my first reaction. Dude, right? it's, it's like it's like uh, like you're shooting marbles and then a wrecking ball going through a straw house, right? It's just like incredibly different. He's staying with the non-reactive on the left lane. Now, if you remember, he had a little more hook on the left lane, so right. he's okay with that. He needed help on the right lane. This will be his best ever finish in the PBA playoffs. Come on, Tommy. PBA Junior Club members got a message for you. The PBA Junior Showdown, powered by Lane Talk, kicks off in just a few days, June 1st. And this is your chance to compete for $6,000 in smart scholarships. Head to PBA.com for more info and download the Lane Talk app today. On the right lane, which has been problematic throughout the day. I mean, what a difference, right? The, the, the subtlety of the strikes with urethane equipment, and then you watch the reactive resin go down the lane, and the whole the whole scenery changes. 
It really does. I mean, he's begging for this ball to hit. Right? If you put a big ball in his hand, he's only begging for nothing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, these lanes, uh, the oil pattern, you know, they got the blue dye in the oil. That's what we're looking at. Lane's not dirty there, but every shot they throw, you can see those little strips. So they're taking oil off the front part of the lane, but when it gets to the back end where there is no oil, it is delivering that oil there, and that's what's tightening, tightening the lane up. When we say tighten the lane, means it doesn't hook as much. Great start for Troop here in match number two. Perfect through three. How's that number? Yeah, you think he... I don't even know what color that line is now. <laughs> yeah, what do you get when, when red is over blue, right? It's purple. Purple? Yeah. There's uh, the marks on the lane that Norm's talking about and the, basically the trench that the players have created. Yeah, and it looks like the outsides of that lane is, is, is dry. No, but not it's really. Not. It is yeah, not. No. It is so slick, to tell you the truth. Yeah. Tommy going for his 21st career tour title. Right now he's tied for 13th most in PBA history with 20. I mean, what a difference. Game two has been already from game one. Yeah, and you get these two guys with the power game. I mean, when they get this ball, it's reactive resin, so it's stickier. It's going to hook more. Yep. And when you give these power players that much hook, their carry percentage is going to go way, way up. Yep. Now they just need to get it to the pocket. Right. And like we talked about earlier, execution, follow the transition. Tommy maybe waited too long to go to that ball, but that's what he thought he had to do. And the match was still close late. Or excuse me, the game was still close late. Yeah, on the left lane, they've been getting it, get one of those but two. barely. It, it hasn't been, you know, quite as obvious that pins are trying to hit other pins, but they're just not getting there, right? I think it's just a matter of time before he goes to reactive resin on both lanes. Yeah, I agree. Kyle carrying the light hits. Tommy just lost one there. Ooh. What do you call that, Rob? Ooh. He had to go shopping for some skinny jeans this Sunday. Not all <laughs> the stores are open at this hour. That's my boy. Skinny jeans. Oh, he squeezed into that spare, Norm. <laughs> yeah, suck in, your, suck in your breath and suck in your gut. Uh, this, these fit fine. I'll take them. Do you have them in gray also? <laughs> <laughs> So Kyle pops up, opening three bagger for him. Leads at 11. Kyle already threw one of his re-racks. We have an update, Randy. Tell me. We're here. We're where we want to be. We are at the Beer Frame, sponsored by Pabst Blue Ribbon of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Grabs a Pabst today, and please drink responsibly. Norm, quick, say that line. Grabs? Yep. Grabs a Grabst. Pabst? Yeah. Okay. I'll go with that. Yeah. Just read the copy. That's pretty much all I do. <laughs> he doesn't have his glasses on. <laughs> You heard Tommy Jones on that left lane when he left that shaker seven. He said, why can't I get one of those? Kyle just comes back with another one and says, no, that's my hit. Yes, because he's got no thumb in that ball, and Tommy Jones does. It might be about a rev and a half more. Maybe that's the reason, Randy. A little higher rev rate. Rapstastic. I know those two people. 
You know everyone. Jones down by 31 now, halfway through game number two. On that right lane, gets them all. Here's some good numbers here, guys. Look at these numbers here. Yeah, watch this ball respond right there. Like somebody just kicked it left. And that's the break point. It's yep. because that's where the blue oil stops right. and where no oil starts. So mm -hmm. when people reference break point, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Staying with urethane on the left. Strike and a nine spare on that left lane here in game number two for Jones. Hey, 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 hey. Got a strike to it. Well, game one was a rock fight, Randall and Norm. Uh, this is a scorer's paradise here in game number two. And Troop is perfect through five. Tag team matches in history. The Usos take on RK Bro in the Tag Team Championship Unification Match. It's an all new Friday Night SmackDown, live at 8 Eastern on Fox. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Look at that t shirt. That's awesome. And to get Kyle with that facial expression is beautiful. Oh, that's good stuff. Yeah, so Tommy's got one look, right? And, and Kyle's got another look. Polar opposites. Well, I wonder what would happen if, I don't know, if we flipped the looks. No way. Oh, 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 oh. The crowd is watching it right now. Look at Kyle. Kyle's going to the screen. <laughs> uh, I mean, I kind of like the PBA Thanos look on Jones. Yeah, yeah, you're not you know? wrong. You're not right? wrong. Oh, this is great. Uh, we're having great fun, and we're going to have more fun because, Norm, we are in the midst of a PAP 6 pack alert. Kyle Troop strikes here. He's going to win $1,500, $1, sponsored by PAPS Blue Ribbon of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Please remember to drink responsibly. We love a good six pack alert. What a start this would be to game two for Kyle Troop if he can. Troop and hit six man. Cheers, baby! Isn't he one of the most colorful people in the entire world? Was it his dad? Yes. Apple doesn't fall far, brother. Apple trees make apples, Norm. Uh, he's great. Six pack converted and cracked open. Thank you, Pops Blue Ribbon, for your sponsorship. Kyle Troop. You know, that energy and that fun for sure, but sometimes you got to pump the brakes here. There's $100,000 on the line here, and Kyle in control of game number two and threatening to take a 2 0 lead in this race to three against Tommy Jones. Yeah. And Kyle Troop has moved his feet two or three boards to the left, and he is just getting on it. The ball's not hooking for the line, but he is hitting. Oh, so no, deep, no defense, just offense. Yeah, and, you know, unlike Tommy, who switched balls on the right lane, he just got in a little bit and then started overhitting it. That'll get that ball back. Oh, 41 pin lead, just like that. That's what happens when you're rolling against perfection. Oh, he oh, got that in. Sure did. He got away with it. Big time, big time break for Tommy Jones. He needs everything to fall his way right now. 
Well, he was talking about not getting that late, I mean, that uh, light hit before. Yeah. Well, he gets the Brooklyn. I guess that makes up for that it. That makes up for it. Because that put, that keeps him in this match. Otherwise, he was he was out. Yeah. 0-2. Hello. Whoa, somebody's phone alarm or something went turn off. Your, turn your phones off, folks. <clears throat> I wonder if that was DJ Archer, Tommy's roommate. He's standing just off the, the side of our set. He's shaking his head, looking at me, going, nope, you would know you better than that, Randy. Throw DJ under the bus I would like never. That. I love DJ. I think it's Guppy. Good thing I know and love Guppy Troop. <laughs> Big shot here for Jones. Yeah. He likes it. Yeah. All right, four in a row for Tommy to keep things within striking distance. How big is that Brooklyn? Oh, my gosh. Um, let's flash back to last year, guys. Randy, you remember this one, Milford, Connecticut, Polaro Milford. I do. Here at the PBA playoffs. It was Sam Cooley, the Australian, tanking on Kyle Troop. Game two, Cooley down 1-0, and the 31st televised perfect 300 game in PBA history. Look how excited he is. Oh, my God, he was lit. It was cartwheels. He was, <laughs> like, I didn't even know Sam had teeth, and he, he flashed him to us for just a brief moment. You Not know, the, 300, but Troop able to win. Stand by, I got a thought. Oh, perfect through seven, not through eight. Oh, what a great job we did jinxing him. Sorry about that, Kyle. That was Randy's call. Ball speed up on that shot there. You can see 17.6, a little faster, and that's the reason for the bucket. But did you know in the two years of Kyle Troop's run at the PBA playoffs, he's lost only two games, and one of them was to Sam Cooley's 300. 300. Yeah, 14-2. and two. Yeah. And he had a perfect shot at it. Well, he's 7-0 and in this year's edition of the PBA playoffs, so we did a tremendous slash horrible job jinxing that 300 possibility game from Kyle Troop. So instead, we're going to honor him with the spare of the game, sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. If you believe it, you can do it. Guaranteed Rate, believe you will. So again, no open frames this afternoon for Kyle Troop. He was perfect through seven, gets the six spare there in the eighth. And he steps up now to begin the ninth. The lead sitting at 17. Back on the strike trade. Good news, Norm. He struck on. The left lane in the ninth frame to set up the tenth. Bad news, he's got to finish the game on the right lane. Yeah, he's got to finish on the right lane, and he saw that 41 pin lead. It's down to 17. Yeah, yeah. Fast, and, and yeah. all because of a Brooklyn. Right. right. And a reminder of how the Kia PBA playoffs works. Again, this is a race to three, so even if Kyle holds on to this lead, he's up 2 0, but Tommy Jones will have plenty of time to chip away at that lead and pull himself back in. And if he levels things at two and two, now we go to a ninth and tenth frame roll off. Go! What a nice shot there by Tommy Jones. One more strike, Norm. He'll take the lead in game two for the first time. For the first time in the match. But if he strikes out, he's a winner. No? Nope. 269. No! 276. Oh, 276. I'm, I'm sorry. I read that wrong. Don't have my glasses. It's all right, Norm. And uh, also, we are currently in the midst of another PAPS six pack alert. TJ Strikes here. He's going to win $1,000 sponsored by PAPS Blue Ribbon of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Please remember to drink responsibly. Our second PBR six pack alert of game two. Yeah. 
Well, that puts him in the 250s, the high 250s. Kyle Troop is in the mid 250s. One more, Tommy gets into the 260s and will force Kyle Troop to double in the 10. Eight total strikes for Tommy Jones, including the last six in a row. Boy, how fast this one has swung in favor of Tommy Jones and might have gotten away with that one. That looked in the whole way and it was. Look at our numbers right here by strike track. Up the lane. Yeah, Randy, he knows that his miss has to be left, and it just can't be this far left. Right. Different ball game if he carries a couple of seven pins early. No doubt about it. All right, so he's going to go to reactive and throw a strike shot here because he doesn't need to cover the pin. The scenario stays the same if he makes the spare or not. Right, right. He's fishing right here. Right. No, folks, that wasn't a mistake. It sounded like one. Did you hear that? Oh, the, crowd, the crowd moaned. Now, Kyle Troop must strike first ball here in the 10th frame. If he doesn't, we're all even one game apiece. Strike and six. Strike and six. He was chasing a perfect game until he ran into the right lane in the eighth frame. Got a six spare. He's back on that right lane right now. If he can strike here, he takes a 2-0 lead. Leaves just six. Boy, the difference in 2-0 and 1-1 is absolutely huge. Insurmountable? Not for Tommy Jones, but Sometimes when you're sitting in that seat, you feel like it's insurmountable. Now, Kyle, he needs six. Does he look at reactive? Does he keep uh, doing he, what he's doing? He, he's going to look at reactive. He's going to look at reactive He right needs here. six and two shots, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Needs six for the game. He'll take ten. Hey, Rob. You know the name of the bowling ball he's just went to? It's kind, of, it's kind of a reference to my life. It's, it's called altered reality. <laughs> 2 0 <-D laughs> for Kyle True. No, that's really the name. What a shot there. But, you know, these, you guys, I mean, you know the difference in, in the equipment. You know how much more that ball hooks. You have a really good idea how many boards you got to move with your feet, how many boards you got to move with your target when you go to the reactive. Well, especially if you're looking down. I mean, he's got two. What, what does he do now, Norm? He went back to the European right there. What does he do? I don't know. I think we asked him. 276, more, 257. This is, this One more the for the belt, says your reigning, defending PBA playoff champ. If he can get one more win, the belt goes back to Troop. Tommy Jones knows what he needs to do. Strike and win ASAP. Welcome back to our continuing coverage of the Kia PBA playoffs. We're going to recap the major winners this year. It started with who else? Mr. Major, Jason Belmonte, taking the Players' Championship. Anthony Simonson claiming the U.S. Open. Our good friend Dom Barrett becoming the eighth to win the Triple Crown as he took the TOC. Chris Prather and follow that up with a World Championship title. Yeah, that was after finishing second at the Tournament of Champions. And then the USBC Masters, Anthony Simonson taking care of our guests on the set. Norm Duke, you remember, remember that moment, Norm? <laughs> oh, yeah. 
I've thrown that shot a thousand times and never threw it very good. <laughs> Let me tell you something about that. I, 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 I was texting back and forth with, all, with a lot of players like EJ Tackett for one, and we were all so nervous watching that show. I did the show. I was like on the edge of my seat. EJ Tackett texted me saying, I've never been this nervous watching a, a bowling telecast. And it was all because of Norm. Here at the playoffs, Kyle Troop with the 2-0 lead. We have a bit of a world's colliding situation. Yes, we do. Going on today. I don't know if you know that. You know, I've got my, yeah, my, yeah. my bowling brethren over here. Over my shoulder? Do you see who's here? We've got two legends that are both at Fox Sports in the house. Yeah. Brady Quinn and Bill Raftery standing by with Kimberly Pressler. Kimberly, man, you are, a you, look at that. The, the, the thorn between two roses. Legends indeed, and I'm so excited to have both of you here today. And Brady, let's start with you because you're used to competing at this level. So what is it like watching these two pro athletes out here today? I, I mean, one, the second, uh, the second game, I mean, just the way they turned it on was phenomenal. The crowd's awesome. It's, it's just the difference between how quiet it is when they're getting ready to go, but then after they hit a strike, it's huge. So it's been fun. Now, over the break, I heard you say that uh, you used to bowl in the league. Are we ever going to get you out here one of these days? Uh, maybe. I, I brought two of my two oldest daughters with us. They're having a great time, although we were trying to keep them quiet, though, for the bowlers. So hopefully that didn't mess them up the first game. Thank you so much. And, Bill, you're used to being on TV as well. So, But this is your first time at a PBA event. Yes. What is your first impression? Well, normally at a bowling alley, I'm having a beverage with a <laughs> bunch of friends and having a great time. But uh, this is, I think I should have grown my hair a lot bigger. Yes. I would have been a much better athlete. <laughs> well, we can get you a Paps Blue Ribbon right over there anytime you want. Thank you guys both for coming out today. <laughs> oh, my God. I have tears coming out of my eyes. The rap is the best. By the way, we didn't even know he was coming here. Yeah. Uh, Randy and I saw him, what, about six hours ago? Yeah. <laughs> I think we closed out an establishment in the greater Jupiter area, had yeah. dinner with Bill and his beautiful wife, Joni. So I turned around the corner, and there's Raph showing up. I told him to come by, and there he is, all dressed up. And then Brady Quinn and his beautiful wife, Alicia, coming up here. We love it. We're, we're spreading the gospel of a sport that, yeah. that the three of us really care a lot about. No doubt about it, to have them here and present, isn't it exciting? we got to get them up. I, we don't have enough headsets up in our booth right now. Hey, they Nor, can you got to hold headset. down the ground, Norm, because they're coming for you. They're they coming for have, you. Yeah, they can have this. No, no, they're not taking it at all. All right, so game number three coming up next here at the Kia PBA playoffs. And uh, Kyle Troop has stormed to a 2-0 lead. Tommy Jones is in an absolute must-win situation. And it's next, live on Fox. Yeah, definitely uh, one of the older guys. I don't necessarily feel old because I've surrounded myself with the younger guys and kind of, you know, helped them along just like some of the, the older guys before me helped me along. So they've kept me young and kept me feeling like uh, I'm still part of the group there, but my body definitely knows it sometimes. 22nd year on the tour for the 43-year-old from Simpsonville, South Carolina, Tommy Jones. and. Yeah, the crowd is coming alive right now, and they need to elevate that man, Tommy. He needs a win. Otherwise, Kyle Troop will be your back-to-back -back PBA playoff champ. Well, we tell you, you bring a sign, we're putting you on television. We've got some grabtastic signs as well. As we continue our coverage of the Kia PBA playoff championship. Race to three. Kyle has raced to a 2-0 lead as you take a look at the strike total today. And remember, Kyle with 11 last game, including the front seven. Tommy had eight, but not enough. Well, game two heated up like a Mongolian sure barbecue, did. didn't it? I was not expecting that spice after the rock fight we had in game one. to this broadcast, Norm, was Tommy Jones. No TV appearances last season. Folks wanted to write him off. Uh, 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 not so fast. He's down 2-0. Folks want to write him off. Today, I say, not so fast. Not so fast. He's down 0-2. However, he's not out. There's no question about it. But it is a lonely feeling down there in that seat when you're down 0-2 and you got, you know, you're you're one loss away from watching the playoffs go to your competitor. 
Tall Mountain in front of him. Tall Mountain in front of him, just saying. Yeah, Randy, they've pulled up just enough oil off of those, you see the stripes down there, uh, just enough oil to get that ball to hook. Yep. You know, I thought he was going to, to move in and do more like Tommy, yep. at least reactive resin on the right lane. He decided not to. And, you know, he got the shot 270. Why not stick with what brought, brought you here? What's, your, the, what's the saying you like to use, Norm? Dance, Dance with the one who brung you. Yeah, there you go. Well, he's just a couple flat tens away on that right lane from going to reactive resin. No question, yes. And that looked like a flat ten to me. The last shot he threw. Yes! 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 Okay. That was a deep knee bend, which told you something was wrong. Be interesting. Three, six, nine, ten. The danger pin is that back pin, the nine pin. You got to have enough ball going through the three, six to cover that back pin. Yeah, and oftentimes you get just enough to get that back pin and you chop. Yeah. Three off the six or the three six off the ten. Only 66% of the time on the tour, this spare conversion is dropped. So again, no open frames from Kyle Troop today. Yeah, that's just like a double right there. You can tell <laughs> he wasn't liking it. Pitter pat, pitter pat, right? <clears throat> Tommy on that right lane. This has certainly been the tougher of the two lanes today. Tommy makes quick work of it. Yeah, I think the right lane has now become Tommy's favorite lane now that he's in the bigger ball. He missed only once last game on that right lane, Norm. Hated it, but we'll take it. Tommy Jones. That's a little bit inside, and, and it just kind of laid there, Norm. Yeah, it did. And you know, Kyle Troop just got off that lane. He got his inside, and it didn't lay it down at all. It just moved right through the right through the head pin. I mean, you can really see the track on the lanes. Look at that beat up area in the front. Well, neither of those shots he liked very much, and he's got a 20 pin lead. So. Now, score wise, this is his best start of the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Another strike, both on that right lane for Kyle Troop and the PBA King of the Lanes. The Royal Family Edition begins Monday, June 6th on FS1, <laughs> 9 East to Premier Bolero. And yeah, Team Gup. Guppy? There's baby Kyle. <laughs> that was the last time Guppy rolled on television. It was in Erie, Pennsylvania. What was it 98? 98. 1998. There's Guppy live with us right now. You're going to see Guppy and his son Kyle in action coming up. One of the best. One of the best. Absolutely. You walk into a bowling center and you see Guppy and you yeah. say to yourself, they just got better. Yep. Yeah. I'll tell you, Norm knows, he's known Guppy as long as I have. You rolled against Guppy, for sure. I bowled against him in 1984, and he beat me. Not that you remember it. I do. Yes, I do. I didn't like him for at least a year. Yeah. Uh, so you referenced Norm, you referenced Norm bowling against Guppy, but you, you, like, you don't think I bowled, ever bowled against Guppy? Hey, Randy, did you ever bowl against Guppy Troop? You're damn right I did. All right, tell me about it. Uh, it was a long time ago. Okay. Did you lose? 
<laughs> I don't know. Can't remember. I don't think I ever bowled him on television. Plenty of times in match play. And one time, Guppy turned me in and I got fined. He turned you in for what? I kicked foul light. So you didn't like him for a year either. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> now, you can watch this. Tommy is digging right now. He knows he's got to keep this lead. Messenger! Four for four to start game three for Tommy Jones. What a great time for a messenger for Tommy Jones. Yeah, Watch this. Pin, it, it gets flipped around. Head pin, sidewall, 10 pin, get out of my face. Remember last game, Kyle Troop perfect through seven. Tommy doing some maintenance work right now, perfect through four. what he has to do to stay in this, right? Well, if he doesn't miss, he doesn't lose. We learned that early, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, he, he needs to strike a lot, too, because Kyle Troop, other than that bucket, he just hasn't seen anything except strikes. Six spare in the second on the left lane, but strikes first, third, and fourth. Defending champ down 30. If he wins this game, he takes the title. Uh-oh, through the nose. Early dig there, Norm. Yeah, that was the same as uh, frame two for him where he got it in, it overhooked. He's looking at a 310 this time instead of the uh, 36910. Yeah. Believe it or not, this is a split, but it is quite a bit easier than the 36910. It's starting to look more and more like the transition is going to take over the urethane for Kyle Troop, and he's going to have to get into the reactive ball. I think you're right. 310, only covered 57% of the time on the tour, and he missed it. First open frame of the afternoon for Kyle Troop. This is exactly what Tommy Jones needed. A perfect start coupled with an open frame from Troop. Lead has swollen to 44. Just like that. Mm -hmm. Swollen? Swollen. Yep. Could be a word, maybe it's not. I'd Just like to think it is. USFL action, Randy, coming up next. Pittsburgh Maulers and the Houston Gamblers here on Fox and the Fox Sports app. And your team is? The Tampa Bay Bandits. Just across, across this beautiful state of Florida. And no messenger. It's no time. No nothing. It's time. Right, because he's high on the, on, on the lane two shots ago. He moves in, and now he's not getting his ball through the pins like it was before. I think it's time, but I thought it was time in match, uh, game number one. Yeah, but he shot 270 in game two. And he, like you said, you danced with the one that, that you brung, and he stayed with it. But I think it's getting real close to that time. Yeah, and he'll get a chance. Troop shot out to a 2-0 lead in this race to three. Tommy Jones ended game three saying, win or it's over. And Tommy is in control, and he is perfect through five frames. Rob Stone, Norm Duke, Randy Peterson, Kimberly Pressler here with you in the online graphics you see today, including the ball tracer courtesy of Clutch Bowling. Love me some clutch. Love me the way that Tommy Jones has come out here in game number three, a must-win situation, and been perfect. Up 44 on Kyle Troop. Oh, 
little six pack for Tommy there. Your thing carry down, Norm? Yep. That's what I'm seeing right there. I think about four or five shots ago in that lane, that ball rolls up. Maybe it's a commercial break. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe he missed it. It looked pretty good to me, though. Right in the face of the two pin, so a spare for Tommy. <clears throat> well, here's the interesting part about it. Had Tommy got that strike, then I think that Kyle Troop changes balls on both lanes and makes sure and fishes around and gets lined up with the, with, with the reactive bowling ball. Now that Tommy missed that shot, it almost, you know, it puts, it puts Kyle back in play. He may not make that move now. I think Kyle's going to react to resin on both lanes. I do too. But it sure did muddy the water a little bit, yeah. didn't it? it made, yeah, it brought, it brought him back, back down to earth a bit, but still a big lead. Tommy! Back on the strike train goes Tommy. So right before we went to break, here's Kyle Troop looking over at his tour rep. Done. Let's see what let's see if what we think he's yeah, he's going to react to resin. So he was meaning done. I'm done with the urethane, I'm getting out of it. Correct. Going with altered reality. Change works. Look at the difference. From the urethane ball, the big lot, the big, the big angle versus the urethane angle. The blue line was urethane. Break point is still the same, Norm. Yeah, they're trying to get it off the same break point down lane, but getting it to that break point and how much on it do you want once it gets there? That's yeah. the whole equation you're trying to solve. That was pretty good right there in solving that equation. Yeah. Same ball in the left lane. Jones still using urethane on the left lane. We go to the eighth. Yikes. Three, four, six, seven. He's going to try to get the ball over here to the right side of the three pin and cut it into the four and seven. Twenty percent of the time is, or almost twenty-one percent of the time is a tour average. Look at that curve in early. Second open frame here in game number three. And this one is looking more and more like we're going to go to at least game number four. Yeah, we're definitely going to see game That's four. That's done. Uh, hang on, hang on. Norm, he was throwing a strike ball. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's why we know we're going to <laughs> game you. four. So Kyle thinking big picture. He has moved on. From game number three. Yep. Tommy gets that rack to collapse. Maybe not to his liking. That's that spot we talked about early. Down lane on the right lane. Once it gets wide, really, it just no way. Right there, no way. Yeah, you, you know what we call that part of the lane, Norm? Out of bounds? What? We used to call it that. You know what we call it now? What Rob and I call it? We, we, we say it's slicker than an otter's pocket out there. Slicker than an otter's, otter's pocket. pocket. Yeah. I've never seen an otter's pocket. I'm going to take your word for it. Where do, where do otters live? They live in the ocean. <laughs> Just take his word for it, Norm. I'm taking Just his, take word, his for word for it. Kyle Troop in some conversation as Tommy Jones steps up. Yeah, this is his first look at reactive resin on the left line. I think that's Black Widow Ghost right there for Tommy on the left lane getting out of the urethane. Question is, does he stay with it going into game four? What do you think, Norm? I would be guessing because that has been a pretty good lane for him all day. But uh, the fact that he did change and he's fishing, uh, that means it's a, it's a, a possibility, maybe probability. 
This game is over. Kyle Troop is just trying to get locked in for game four and avoid a ninth and tenth frame roll off. Cut that lane locked in, Norm. Yeah. I think he's just going to move a couple left on this left lane. Remember, it's it's the hooking lane of the two. He probably played it a couple of boards different. It might be four or five now gotcha. because of the reactive, res I mean, the non-reactive balls mm -hmm. drying up the mid part of the lane. You don't see that very often. Down by 77. That was pretty deep and it may be a little loft. Well, this is what you showed earlier on your graphic where players going to start here, they're going to end here. Well, we've got one more game at least and <laughs> he's in there. Yeah. I mean, who do you give the edge to going into game four now, Norm? I call it 50-50. Okay. You know, the only question mark I have is the one shot that Tommy threw on the left lane with the reactive. You know, now, now what's going on in his head? Is it, well, that looks pretty good, so do I go to reactive now on both lanes, or do I stay with the urethane on that lane? Well, that's the question he's asking himself, and right now I don't think he's answered it yet. He's going to get up in the next game and make that call on the fly. Here's another look at a different ball from Kyle Drew. And it, what's funny is even though the motion looked better, he's a ring and set. Yeah, you can tell he put it right on the last shot yeah. spot. So both balls he played from the same spot. I like the one that strikes, not the one that ten pins. Jim Callahan, as tour rep, told us he's playing the lanes five boards difference, and that's pretty much what you said, Norm. Yeah, we had him a couple most of the years here. Now it's already to five. Different ball on that lane for Tommy Jones. It's the Black Widow Ghost that he used on the left lane. Can I throw the last two on the left lane? Is that legal? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what you just mentioned. It's what we've been talking about. Yeah. He he wants another shot on that left lane. Unfortunately, he's not going to get it until the next game. Exactly. That's the fun part of this strategy thing. Right? right now, he knows I got the right lane. He doesn't know how much different the left lane is. He's been throwing two different balls all day long. Yeah. He doesn't know it's five. I think he thinks it's two. He's going to finish the next game on the left lane. He's trying to pick something out of his head that he doesn't have. <laughs> he doesn't even own a pick. He's got some razors for sure. There's a lot of chess pieces being moved around. Figuring out plans of attack as we close in on the start of game four. As we close out game three. 78 pin win for Tommy Jones, 279, 201. So, Tommy's been here before. Will he be back again? Another must win game for Tommy Jones. Otherwise, it's Troops title. to the Kia PBA Tour playoffs. Kyle Troop and his 2-0 lead now reduced to 2-1 against Tommy Jones as we enter game four. We go head-to-head -head through three games between these two top 10 seeds. Strikes, spares, and opens. And those two opens from Kyle Troop came in the last game. Tommy Jones, so strong that last game. So if Tommy can get a win here, we're off to a two-frame roll-off, the ninth and tenth frames. Kyle wins it. He's your first ever two-time PBA playoff champion.
Wow, right. Wow, right. I mean, what yeah, a chess a game match, game. guys. You know, they start with urethane. They're moving all over the place. Game one's a little dicey. Then all of a sudden, the strike fest starts. Then they're changing bowling balls, moving 10 boards left with their feet. I mean, and, and just, bo oh, there's the guppy thrust. <laughs> <laughs> That's a baby thrust. <laughs> like he's got a bigger one if he wins. Uh, no comment there, I guess. Just a thrust, guys, just a thrust. Natural strikes. Yeah, now this is the decision, I think, of the whole game. Of the tournament. I think he's gonna stay put. Randy thinks he's gonna change balls. Neither of us know. What would you do, R Norm? I would change. Randy? Change. Tommy? He's staying. And this is just all about not having enough information on the left lane to be confident that you can start with a four or five bagger. He knows what this ball is going to do, but it can change in a heartbeat. Go, Tommy! Did that validate his decision? I know he got the result he wanted, but the way he got it? No, did not validate anything. In fact, I think, I think that he just knows he's got five shots over there. And I mean, you know, his 10th frame, maybe he's got six or seven. He just doesn't want to fish. Jones, last two games, 257, 279, the highest for him in the playoffs. Did you know that? I did not know that. And he's contemplating changing balls, so. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Opening pair for Troop as well. Well, let's take a look at what Kyle Troop was doing with urethane and now what he's doing with reactive. Reactive with blue ball, urethane, the red one. And you can see how much faster he has to throw the reactive resin because it just hooks that much more. So he's got to get it down the lane. But here's some of the numbers I want you to look at. Here's his position at the arrows and his position at the lay down or the launch. 14 boards difference at the laydown area where the ball comes in contact with the lane. 10 at the arrows. Yeah, which equates to probably 20 boards with your feet. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Now, now, Norm, he said, oh, boy, because he got it inside of target. Teamwork. Way inside of target as you're looking at the... The strike track to the right. And it held pocket because of your thing. Well, that and because of angle. You know, when you don't think there's there's been oil pushed down by Tommy Jones on that left lane to make that ball hold up? Absolutely I do. But the angle that he that, that he's using mm -hmm. at least allows every shot to get wide of the pocket. Um, when you're going straight, sometimes it starts off it's not wide of the pocket. So angle has a little bit of, to do with the, the hold he created there. Okay. Opening three bagger for both here in game four. What'd you see there, Norm? I saw that ball labor down lane. A little where, wiggle. Yeah, where it wasn't laboring before, but listen, he's got so much hand in it. Coming up next, guys, USFL action. Pittsburgh Maulers, Houston Gamblers here on Fox and on the Fox Sports app. Who's got the best unis? Rob. Tampa Bay Bandits. Yeah, but that's just because that's your team. No, they actually have really good uniforms, too. They've got it all. They're the complete package. Although the Birmingham Stallions, 5-0 and to start this season. Jones on that left lane. He's got the right figured out. This is where questions arise. Let's go, Tommy! We're questioning that shot. Opening hand bone there for Jones. And he takes a seat. So, Rob, you, you called game one a rock fight. Yep. Game two, a score fest. Okay. Game three. Um, Team Jones. Okay. And what would you call game four to this point? Strategery. <laughs> I love you, Rob. 
You're the one. Here we go with some <laughs> strategery. Oh, oh, pulled that one in nicely. Woo. Both Troop and Jones, four for four to open up game four. Now pick it out, kid. 24 to 6 on this shot, guys. It's covering a lot of real estate, isn't it, Norm? That is really bellying the ball a whole lot. And that's what the two-handers can do is, man, they two or three games into a block, they just throw their feet way left and just wind on it. Kyle, a good 10 boards left on the lane. Then Tommy Jones. 10, two arrows. Yes, and that is definitely at his advantage. Go, go, get up there, baby! Kyle had the opening seven in game two, and Pops Guppy seeing him with the opening five here in game four. The Gupper, you gotta love the Gupper. <laughs> He'd be smiling that big even if, if, if Kyle was bowling bad, though. He just yeah. smiles every day. It doesn't matter. Every day above ground is a good day for Gup. What a match we have here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and keep in mind, if Troop wins, he is the champion. If Jones wins, two-frame roll-off. Two-frame roll-off. Yep. No messenger. Ten stands. Nice shot, Bill Wad. You yeah, you call does. it the last time he was up on that right lane. Yeah, I just labored. That's <clears throat> when it labors. Yeah, you get a strike here and there, but you're not going to get ten baggers if your ball's laboring down lane. This thing has to move into the pins. Now he didn't throw it very good, Randy. He did get an inside target. He did miss it a little bit, so he might not be worried about it. I don't know. You and I seem to be worried about it. Well, the only thing I'm worried about is that Kyle Troop may not miss. He may not. And if that's the case, game over. There were game two. Kyle, 11 total strikes, including the front seven. Troop with the front five here. It's the first spare we've seen of this game. Ken Jones must win to force a roll off. Tommy! Messenger dropped that 10. <laughs> 43 year old slinging messengers, guys. Ah. I think he still has some left in the tank. Yeah, so does Kyle Troop, though, who's been perfect through five. We wrap up game four from the PBA playoff championship round next. Now it's my game to win, so Correct. if it's I throw five strikes, I win. Correct. Just keep making good shots and repeat what you're doing. And like you say, listen to my voice and, so, and I won't make you forget anything. Yeah. That's the only reason We're I do locked that. in. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't forget anything. Dude, it's there. Thank you. So. I'm going to keep that. I was going to One non-strike difference here in game four. If Troop wins, he wins. The playoffs. If Tommy Jones wins, we'll go to that fifth and decide. The PBA on Fox is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. Get cash out of your home's equity with a cash out refi from Guaranteed Rate. Learn more at rate.com. And by Kia and the new Forte GT. It is one fantastic ride. Beautiful look at the Jupiter Inlet Lighthouse. Opened in 1860. I'm being told by a trusted source, 105 steps to the top. I think our producer, David Bruner, was there. That is the trusted source. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Lug that camera out there to give us that billboard shot. We pretty take awesome, a look at Dave. the all-time PBA playoff winners. Prather back in 2019 in the first ever edition of the playoffs. A good friend. 
Filio in 2020, and then Kyle last year as the one seed, and he's just a few frames away from defending that title. And of course, we're going to see Kyle and Tommy a little bit later in June in the King of the Lanes tournament coming up. So Kyle, do they even have an? They do not have. They do not have an elevator. Well, no, then I'll I never see the top. I asked. It takes you out of the running, huh? Yep. And then uh, the fact that it's 12 bucks to get in, that writes off Randy. <laughs> that took Randy out. <laughs> I don't do well in thin air. <laughs> what an opening six pack for Truth. And again, look at the angles, 23 Reactive. and a half to five. Leads at 21 for Team Troop. Last time Guppy used angles like that, Norm, he was shooting a 10-pin. <laughs> and he hit it. Yeah. 22 to 5. If only Guppy enjoyed life a little bit more. I know. Troop. Second time today, he's opened up with the front seven. Did it in game two en route to a 19-pin win. He's doing it right now here in game four. Foot on the accelerator. Just like Guppy driving him home to North Carolina later today. Turn signals oh, optional. No! Gas oh! optimal. Tommy down 31, must win this game. Will not go quietly. Yeah, that was real good. All right, one more, he could cut it to 11. This is one of his best shots of the day here. Gets it all the way to the right. That's where the friction is. Yep. And it comes back. Still with the urethane. Can't change now, right? He can't Gotta change Gotta stay now. committed. He can't change now. Yeah, there's just not enough information in his head to go change it. Uh, don't forget to head on over to the PBA YouTube channel, guys, in just a couple minutes. PBA post show presented by Kia once this one is done. USFL action on the backside here on Fox. Let's go, Tommy! Three in a row for Jones into that deficit. Rob, Rob, did you tell uh, the viewers that Tommy's 43? 43 years old. 22 years on the tour, 20 tour titles, tied for 13th most in the history of this great league. Like at the beginning of the, of the That's the exactly telecast, what we hit, right? Weren't we, weren't, wasn't there some mention of people writing him off after last 100%. season, right? Yeah. Right okay. off Tommy Jones okay. at your own peril, whether right. it's today or through the course of the season. I wasn't one of those because I have him as an anchor man on the Dallas Strikers coming up go. in a couple of months. You got Tommy? Yeah, I got Tommy. And I got wow. two years ago's winner of this. Bill oh. O'Neill. True passenger. Get down 10. Get down 10 pin. Get in your home. Eight in a row for Team True. And he tries to settle things down, asking for a re-rack. How about this messenger? Delivering on Sundays! <laughs> Double pistol. Double pistol. Bang, bang! <laughs> what did he just say about that shot clock? He may get one. He's going to get a shot clock violation. Yeah, there is a little screen. It's out of the shot right now. And the clock is, what is it, 20, 25? 25? Yeah. Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll take the minor fine. 
Yeah, it's a minor fine. Right, been take, doing take doing that. Doing six packs all day long. He doesn't even see. You know what? Randy might go over there and just kick it, and Guppy will find him. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna run down there and <laughs> chuck and chuck that, that shot clock out the side door. That's a big shot in the ninth. Troop has been perfect here in game four. Oh, the wet's inside. It laid there, Norm. Well inside, and it just stuck there. Guppy approves. Yeah, this look left off his hand, and it just laid there. That's what the left of your opponent gives you. That's why it's an advantage. Is that's clean. That's a clean part of the lane. Nobody's throwing a shot right there. Wow. Second time Kyle has flirted with a 300 game today alone. <sighs> Had the first seven in game two. He's got the first nine here in game four. Must strike now for Tommy Jones. Absolutely. He has to strike out to have any chance. Let's go, Tommy! Oh. Nope. It's over. It's over, yeah. He got that one down the, on the floor a little early. Looked like he might have dropped it a little bit and just caught it. Lost speed. Ball took off early. Now Kyle has done the math. He's sitting there. He, don't want, he does not want to celebrate sitting down. There's some internal partying going on right now. Definitely now. Yeah, Guppy's over there coming out of his shoes. He can't yeah. wait to party with yeah, his the kid. Belt, the belt yeah. will go back to Kyle Troop. He will be your two-time defending PBA playoff champ. What color is the sky in those glasses right now? Yeah, but the story is not done here yet. Yeah, Kyle gets the finish on his good lane. Chasing 300. I think the right lane's a little bit, a little bit friendlier for Kyle. Well, he, he got the bird dog on the right lane last shot. Yeah. That's tour title number nine for Kyle. His first this year. Nice, That's finished the season for both of them here today. Tommy is the right thing. Step aside and let's see if we got some history. All right, let's go, Kyle. Yeah, I say normally these are three hard shots to throw because it's a ten thousand dollar bonus should you get them. But when you just when you just pocketed a hundred grand, it makes these three a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. Chasing three hundred. Guys, does PBA bowling ever disappoint on nope. Fox? On, no, never. On. Let's finish this thing off in style, Kyle. Folks, if you're watching at home, call your neighbors. Stay present. Tell them to turn their TV on to Fox. Everybody in this building is cheering for that young man. Congratulations, Kyle. And the Kia PBA playoff belt once again goes to Kyle Troop. Who's the champ, baby? You're the champ, baby. The satisfying moment of the match. Sponsored by Snickers. To be the man, you got to beat the man. Nothing satisfies like a Snickers. Storm, love you guys. Lane Tom, Cool Wig, Mike Fuller, X Team Fish. Also, Sean Red. PBA King of the Lanes Royal Family Edition begins Monday, June 6th, FS1, 9 Eastern, right here from Bolero, Jupiter. Contenders Chris and Ryan Barnes taking on Wes and Jordan Malott. 
The winners meet the royal family of Kyle and Guppy True. Coming up next, though, here on Fox, USFL action. Pittsburgh taking on Houston for Randy Peterson. The legend, Norm Duke, the Hall of Famer. Wow, what a great, great show that is. So good to have you with us, Normie. Kimberly Pressler is always ever-present. And what a show Kyle Troop put on. He is once again your PBA Playoff Champ.